Hello everyone, welcome back. I have got a treat for y'all guys. This is the Jet Beam WL20 hunting flashlight. 1,000 lumens in a powerhouse of a flashlight. Okay, some of y'all may say, Kevin, what's a hunting flashlight? This one here has got three different modes. It's got your red, green, white. So it's supposed to be if you're tracking a deer or a wounded animal, it's supposed to help you see the blood better. I've never used a flashlight like that. Whenever I've tracked wounded deer, yes, I've had to track wounded deer. Yes, I found a bunch of wounded deer. Not just some of my deer, but other people's helped them track them down. And we found them. But anyway, anyway, guys and gals, we're going to take a look at this flashlight. We're going to do our typical review. We're going to do a submersion test. Unless it's got an outside port charger. We're going to do a submersion test, drop test, and finally a nighttime test. Then we're going to post a follow-up review or a follow-up commentary the next day. All right, guys and gals. Uh, let's get this over to the bench, get some weights, measurements, do the submersion, do the drop. Then we're going to do the nighttime portion tonight. Guys and gals, let's get this thing opened up. Now, whenever I got it, the package was already like this, which is not a big deal. And it was already open. Okay, there we go. Man, that is a big carry pouch. It's all right. Man. Get your standard top lanyard. USB cable. There's recharging port, good. Okay. Oh, you turn the head, okay. Yeah, guys, look at that. That is all right. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. On off. Brightness selectors here on the side. All right, let's go get this thing charged up. Well, let's take some measurements, guys. That's all right. That is all right. First impressions are good. Open it up. Turn it on, then turn the head to change the to the color that you want. That's all right, guys. It's nice. It's got a good, solid click to it. Listen to that. Put up here by my microphone. So it's got a good, solid click on the setting. It's like it's got a divot or something inside of there. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, guys. Okay. Let's see here. What have we got? 7.70 ounces. 7.70 ounces. 5 and 13 sixteenths long. That is about 1 inch in diameter with a head being an inch and 11 sixteenths inch and 3 quarter in diameter. Now it's time for the drop test. All we're doing is we're going to hold it at a height of about four feet, and we're going to drop it several times. I'm not going to drop it straight on the head, just like as if somebody was out in the woods tracking a deer. What we're looking for is if the light flickers, changes settings, anything like that, while being dropped out of about four feet. Nope, nothing. Good. i tell you what. Right on the head. Yep, nothing. Okay, make sure that works okay. And it does, nice solid click, guys. This is built as a hunting flashlight, so we're gonna treat it just like as if it, we were out hunting with it, guys. Tracking a deer, following a deer trail, 
working our way back to the four-wheeler anything i do not see any grease on the threads maybe just a little bit of like machine grease or something where they machined it take put that on there nice and tight okay drop it in the water just like if we were crossing a creek or something and it fell in the water going along a four-wheeler across the creek it fell off the four-wheeler going through a creek on a four-wheeler atv fell out of the four-wheeler landed in the water it's going to sit there we're going to leave it there for about an hour then we'll come back to it take it out check it charge it then do our nighttime shots well guys and gals i've been watching the time flashlight has been in here for an hour let's take it out i forgot to bring a towel out here so i'm just going to have to dry it off of my shirt shirt tail let's get this thing opened up see if we see water behind the lens and no water behind the lens which is good it's kind of worried about it leaking around that around that pivoting head all right get that thing opened up no water no water no water all right outstanding outstanding now we're going to go fully charge the battery got a couple hours of light left we're going to fully charge the battery then we're going to do our nighttime test Okay, everyone, so what do I think of the Jet Beam WL20? I said, I like it. I like it. And some of y'all are going to say, Kevin, of course you like it. You got it for free. Guys, that has nothing to do with it. I'm an ethical reviewer. I make full disclosure that I was sent this flashlight at no cost to myself to review. Get that out there. Anybody that does not disclose their relationship with a company is not an ethical reviewer. Is that not only am I required to disclose that by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, it's also the right thing to do, guys. If I don't like a product, I'm going to tell you. And this thing here addresses several issues that lights like this have. One of the problems that a lot, lot of lights like this have is that you cannot find the beam adjustment or the brightness adjustment on off switch is just that it's, it's kind of difficult to find and if you go back and look at some of my videos i talk about that quite often putting that on the tail cap eliminates that problem the brightness settings are adjusted by right here i hope that's focused in good you push that down and you could turn that on momentarily turn the head push that little thing again that little tab again turns it on momentarily Turn the head again, push it again, turns it on momentarily to either side, okay? So that right there is your momentary on-off and also your brightness adjustment. On-off or momentary, on-off. Momentary, on-off. Turn it on, push it on. So, so Jet Beam has addressed one of the issues of having it difficult to find the on off switch or the brightness adjustment setting with it being here on the side they've moved it here on the tail cap and in between the ears it's like if you're out here at night and you just kind of push that on off just like that the problem that i had so let's go ahead and just turn it over to the white light was that also adjust the brightness setting so it takes it took me a few minutes it took me a little bit playing around with it but finally i got it where i can adjust the brightness setting by pushing that, just got to play around with a little bit. See, I mean, it just it makes it nice. And for the strobe, you've got it set to white light. Push that little switch on the side, and you activate your strobe. This is the kind of light that I could see mounted on a weapon. Not only this, not only do I see this as a camping, hunting light, one that you bring out to the deer camp or something. It's also something that you can mount on a weapon light. You want red light, you turn it, push it. Bubba, it's okay, Bubba. Bubba wants some attention, huh, Bubba? All right, get down, down, go play, go play. Anyway, 
you've also got turn it back to white light and you've got your strobe at the press of a button so now this would would this make a good light to bring out the hunting camp out to the deer camp take to the deer stand i could see this also mounted on a weapon it's, it's, it's that's pretty cool guys defaults to the bright okay well it defaults to bright then that makes it even better for a weapon slide you're going to take mount this on a shotgun or something got your strobe defaults to bright turn it to green turn it to red got your two brightness or red settings okay now as much as i like it there's a couple of things that i have to mention is that the holes on for the lanyard i mean I do not understand why companies cannot enlarge these holes just another fraction of an inch so we can put 550 cord through there. Some people like a lanyard. Some people do not like a lanyard. My lanyards I like because take that lanyard, hang it up somewhere. You hang it by the front door on the way out. Take it off, that, off the clip. Put it in a backpack, clip it up there on the, on the side of the backpack. So as you're looking forward at night, you find that lanyard and pull that flashlight out of the backpack. Lanyard is, I mean, it's just got so many different applications for so many different people. I like a lanyard on my flashlight. Walking around at night, trip, fall. Now I've done it before. I've done it before. If anybody says that, hey, I haven't stumbled at night. Well, they're probably lying or they've never been walking in the woods. Walking around at night, places like this stumble and you don't want that flashlight to go flying out of your hand so yeah lanyard i feel is important for certain applications for certain people i like a lanyard i'm going to take a point off for the lanyard hole not being big enough to five for 550 cord this looks like it's about 332nd tall and about an eighth of an inch across i mean just a little bit bigger guys just a little bit bigger on the lanyard hole be able to put paracord through there Okay, guys, that's about all. Well, hang on the battery. Hang on the battery. This comes with a 2600 milliamp battery. For the application, for what this flashlight would be used for, I feel a little bit higher milliamp battery is in order. This is 2600. Increase that up, maybe 3400. Maybe a little bit higher end rechargeable battery. It's got the micro USB port. So yeah, and then also running it on high it developed a little bit of condensation behind the lens. Now, hang on, hang on. Is that condensation from the water test or just humidity whenever the flashlight was assembled? So I don't know. Whenever I put it in the water, let it sit there for an hour, pour it out, turn it back on, I did not see any moisture behind the lens. Use it on high for several minutes, it developed a little bit of condensation. Was it from the drop uh, submersion test or was that from humidity, just natural atmospheric humidity from the time it was assembled? I don't know, guys. I don't know. <sighs> uh, rating, 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 rating. I'm going to give this flashlight a 9.8 rating as of right now. Dogs taking off after something. They love playing out here in the woods. Guys, I'm going to give this flashlight a 9.8 simply because it's so versatile got your momentary on off three different colors just turn the head change the color got your momentary on off right on back here on the back side easy to find little switch you don't have to look for it in the dark just right there between the ear you can operate this flashlight blindfold it in pitch black darkness pick it up turn it on then push the little button right here on the side weapons light mount that on a shotgun rifle or something defaults to the brightness brightest setting You've got your three different, three different red, white, and strobe. Strobe at the push of a button. <laughs> They're over there playing, having a good time. All right, guys and gals, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'm going to do a written write-up of this flashlight. Whenever I get the written write-up posted, I'm going to include a link at the, below the video. So if you want to see some up-close pictures, want to read a little bit more about the details of the flashlight, then follow the link below the video. But it's going to take me a couple of days, a day or two, to get the written review finished. All right, guys and gals, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, post them below. We'll give this a rating of about a 9.8. 9.78. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. All right, guys and gals, I'll talk to you all later.